Welcome to Certain Point of View, your first step into a much nerdier world. Be sure to subscribe, rate, and review the podcast on iTunes. Just go to certainpov.com. Thanks. And now your hosts, Ben Milton and Addie Thomas. Hey, Nerf Herders, I'm Addie Thomas. And I am Ben Milton. Thanks for joining us. Today, we have got Comic-Con news, D23 news as well, but mostly Comic-Con news. That's the big event, but D23 also had some great stuff between Marvel and Star Wars to, to show us and, and kind of what to expect. We'll also talk about some of the things that may not have, that weren't covered in those conventions as well and some of our thoughts with some upcoming, uh, with some upcoming, uh, shows and movies and all that fun stuff uh so we've got all that on the way before we get to that i just want to remind you you can always check out how you can be a part of this podcast if you if you'd like to be a part of what we do if you really enjoy it we'd appreciate just checking out what it what it, you know being a patron would be you can find out and click on the patreon link on our website certainpov.com again that website is certainpov.com let's get right to comic-con let's do so, it I, you know, we were talking earlier today, though, you know, I was listening to Nerdist and some of the other like the other big players in sort of nerd news and entertainment. You know, the, a lot of these guys are talking about like about how exhausting Comic-Con is. And yeah, and, and they were all like I, I was I think so you were you, you and I both watched the post Game of Thrones show and like they have their comic-con voices they're so worn out <gasps> right i was also watching screen junkies they yep. were in the same condition they were completely in a haze and their post comic -Con. was like super low-key this is what happened You're right yes it was great <laughs> i don't ever want to do it again right which is like for us we're like come on you got to appreciate that yeah that's like so that's that's that like that's our mecca you know, yeah, that's the holy land. It is hard. It is really difficult for me to feel bad for these people <laughs> of like them struggling to make it through a weekend yeah. at Comic Con, which I was kind of pointing out to you, you know, both of us working in radio, like so some of the events that are special and the access that we get is really special and yeah. fun and cool and exclusive. But we get worn out with it, too. So, like, we probably would be in the same position. But we've seen that there's a difference between those guys and then like a guy like Chris Hardwick who's just like, yeah, <laughs> like I'm all about it. I can't wait. I'm so excited. Yeah. yeah, and I and I appreciate that about Hardwick. I love his positive attitude. I know that that surprises a lot of people. That's so weird when you to say me. that. I know, but I really do. I really admire Chris's positive attitude about life and where it's taken him. And you know, I, I've tried to. I'm trying to adopt it more to my life. Obviously, like I'm still like. A rage monster. Like I think we agree that if if, if you were if a lantern, you'd I'd be a get red the red lantern. ring. I'd get the red ring. Yeah, yeah. And, and and to a certain degree, I'm okay with that. But I also do. I admire Chris's yeah. like positive, super excited about everything attitude. I think that's a really cool attitude to have. So it, it's it's frustrating to a certain degree to see other people who, like, we kind of put on a pedestal yeah. of like, God, I wish I could be like doing what they're doing. Like they are living the dream. They are. Like the stars of Comic Con, like everybody in nerd culture kind of knows who they are. Right. And they have like these really successful shows and podcasts and stuff like that. So to see them kind of bitch a little bit <laughs> about like, oh, I'm so tired. This was such a drag. I really don't, you know, oh, I'm glad it only comes once a year. Like, screw you, man. Like, <laughs> I, I we can't even get tickets for this thing. Right. Yeah. Like, it, me going to Comic Con right now is, is, a virtual impossibility yeah like with the kids and everything is it's not gonna happen so it's, it's hard to feel bad for him and then and then like you know five minutes later listen to him complain about somebody having white privilege <laughs> like it really discredits that argument for me like <laughs> just shut up <laughs> well let's talk about some of the the stuff that you know some of the different shows that were covered new trailers new information we got so let's start with d23 well uh, right. so uh, let outside of movies and, or TV, we didn't get a whole lot in terms of Rebels. Definitely wasn't much on the Han Solo front, which is understandable. Just yeah, I would be holding that one close to yeah. the best at this point, too. And, it, and everything is all about Last Jedi right yep. now. Mm -hmm. uh, we did get one other piece of news, though. The Thrawn novel apparently did really well this year. 
they are going to be adapting it to a comic, which I am very excited about because I did not want to read the novel. <laughs> I'd rather read the comic <laughs> version instead. So I like I'm, pictures. Yeah, no, exactly. It's not Star Wars if there aren't pictures or music, you know. <laughs> but like just reading, like that seems a bit of a stretch for me. <laughs> and I'm trying. I'm still trying to get through Dark Disciple. David Adams, who we used to do a podcast yep. with. He is loves relentlessly, that. He yeah. Loves those books. He man. texts me like every three days. He's like, "Have you read Dark Disciple yet?" And I was like, "No, no." Uh, just I try. I tried reading the novels, and I haven't found one that like captured my attention. Yeah. In the first like five or ten pages, which is funny because I like oh you know now with what's Legends, there were certain books that I did gravitate towards. Like I did, I did actually like the novelizations of the original trilogy. And I think I read the novelization of Phantom Menace. I never did read Attack of the Clones or Revenge of the Sith. Um, but And I, I enjoyed the novelizations. There was like some nuances that it kind of added and gave it a little bit more depth in certain places where you can't do it that kind of depth, right. that kind of internal, uh, internal monologue sometimes uh, in, in a movie without it coming across as really cheesy. Right. You know? Um, so Looking so, at you, uh, uh, what was the name he did? Postman. <laughs> and uh, uh, not, is that Costner? Yes, yeah. Kevin Costner's films yeah. are like that, where it's like, dude, you should have just left it as a book, <laughs> right? <laughs> Enough. Uh, so, so there was that. But then I also read, of course, the Thrawn trilogy. You know, Heir of the Empire. Mm -hmm. Those were great. Yeah, those were awesome. I remember trying to read a book after that, and I was like, wow, these are really bad. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think I want to go back and maybe re read some of the X Wing books. I've heard great. I've heard good things about those too, but. The thing is, it's t it's a time issue for me. Like yeah. sitting down to read a novel, like uh, I have a hard time finding the time to do that. Yeah. Watch all the TV shows, right. watch all the movies, yeah. read a couple comic books where I can squeeze it in, yeah. and still work and yeah. still have a family well, life. Like because we're at a point where we have so much choice. Before there was like two nerd shows yeah. on the TV. So if you were lucky, yeah, it was e it was much easier to keep up. With that, like Heroes yeah. was the closest you were ever going to get to an X Men, and that show. yeah, and that happened not that long ago. Like yeah. I mean, when I was a kid, sure. Like I mean, there was nothing. I was the A Team Airwolf, and right. you know, whatever. Because that was post Hulk and Batman yeah. sixty. Yeah, like Wonder like the eighties, like were a dry time for yeah. t you know media and and nerd, nerd shows. shows. Yeah. yeah. So well, I had, had a lot of other great TV. Let's remember, I did, the 80s but not, had some but great not, TV, but not nerd TV. Yeah, that's you true. know. Uh, so there, you know, it was a lot of me just like reading. It was me doing a lot of D and D, me a lot of reading, a lot of you know mythology and yeah. a lot of stuff like that because there was nothing else to do for and, nerds. And now for, there's too much. And I think we've mentioned this on the podcast before, but I also like my thought is also like, if I'm gonna read, there are a lot of other books I also need. It to better read. be good quality. Yeah, is I'm not as willing to choose a bad. And this is not just limited to books. But in all of these mediums, with comics and with with movies and TV, we're less likely to kind of want to throw away our time with a bad series. Looking at you, Gotham. Uh, <laughs> I mean, speaking of white privilege. <laughs> <laughs> I did not bother to watch the trailer for Gotham. I was just like, what? No. I'm sorry. You're so far done with that show, you weren't even willing to look at the trailer to see yeah, I think, what's happening? Yeah, I, I don't think I've watched the trailer for the last two seasons. Mm, uh, yeah. Like, I was so done after that first season Yeah. that I was like, I, I, I don't it. need any more of this series. I, I really get it. don't. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's and, funny. And you know what? It's fine that there is this show that someone is doing. It's just not a show that's for me. It's not for us, day. right. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. For and there's who people who like show. it because it's yeah. still on the air, obviously. Like, yeah. it has a some kind of following. Absolutely. People dig it. Uh, but, yeah, it's not for us. And that, what a great time it is to be alive, right? Yeah. Like where we choose. can say, eh, that Batman story TV show, I'm really not that into. I'm gonna <laughs> right. watch something else because there's <laughs> yeah. so many who, other who shows. Who would imagine like, oh yeah, there's a Batman show. I'm not, I'm not interested watch. in yeah. a Batman show. I'll I'll pass on that. Well, and it very, looks a lot like the Inhumans. I'm probably gonna give the same treatment. We got a new trailer for the Inhumans. Uh, yeah. The first trailer got some pretty negative reaction. It was sort of meh. And the second one has a little bit more up, upbeat music to start on to kick it off with. Yeah. Gives a little bit more exposition. And we also saw Medusa's wig in action. You, what do you think about it? I thought it was better than the last trailer, but I don't think that's really a statement of quality as much as just a comparative analysis. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the thing that ultimately, like, I, so let's say I leave this detail out. 
But Scott Buck is the showrunner for this yeah. show. So, all, like, without seeing any material, I'm already skeptical. That material doesn't look compelling. It looks like a bad sci-fi, sh- like, sci-fi channel show. It, it just, can, I, can I be honest? Yeah. It looks like The Inhumans, which I've always thought was a bad sci-fi comic book. <laughs> I've never liked the Inhumans. Yeah, I don't. I've think, never liked any of them. I've never liked Black all... Bolt. I've I've never liked the big giant dog. I, I've never liked. And the, I mean, the dog is the most likable one of yeah. all of them. But like, it's always been like a shitty sci-fi knockoff of the X Men. And I think that's also. So I think there's also sort of the baggage of that though. That knowing that Marvel, in, both in comics, it, like it, it's not like obviously because of the deals where with where each franchise is, they, they can't bring the X Men in. At least not yet. So they're the Inhumans are the cheap knockoff that they can use in the movie universe as a way the movie and TV universe as a way to replace them. I think the problem was when Marvel, as a comic company, decided to kind of like it. At least it looked like they were hard directing Inhumans and moving the X Men aside, like straight up, like and there's this Inhuman disease is killing off the X Men. Yeah, and they have to leave Earth. You know, like it was so it, it was it felt so obviously calculated to like that there's this franchise that we love the x-men we love so much that even though it's with fox we're willing to still give it chance after chance you know yeah it's it's just it's it's just i I, it felt like you were getting your like your your pet replaced and they hadn't even died yet they hadn't died yet and you weren't getting like even the same breed you were getting like like the, a the, mongrel. Yeah, the three legged, <laughs> like, you know, dog that, you know, had like patchy fur and, <laughs> and was so, blind someone just stolen from the track. Yeah. Like a yeah, from yeah the track. he's just like kind of limps around and, <laughs> you know, doesn't really bark well. And you had Lassie before. Yeah. And it's like, well, f- who wants this piece of crap? Like, <laughs> that's always kind of how I felt about the Inhumans. Yeah. And so this TV show kind of feels like that. Like, I'm, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that, like, Legion. It kind of like I was not expecting Legion to be good. Right. You know, Uh, but so I'm hopeful that somehow this kind of had like exceeds expectations. But my expectations are really low just because it's the Inhumans. Well, forget the the quality of the show. Forget the showrunner, the the showrunner, just the fact that it's it's Black Bolt and, you know, his family and trying to figure out like what their role is and yeah. society. Well, I'm no, already not interested. There's two things here. Like knowing the failure of Iron Fist makes me less he- much more hesitant with this show. But then the sh- the part of me that wants to be more optimistic also remembers how rough of a start Agents of Shield had. Yeah, right. So that makes me want to say maybe should I watch this sh- like that's why I'm still debating whether or not I'm going to I'll give it a shot. Show. I'll yeah. give it a shot. Like, I will one, absolutely one give it a shot. Or like, well, we'll see how the season yeah. like I you know kind of I'm kind of I gave Gotham a shot. Yeah. And I the, stuck in there longer than Gotham than you did. Well, ultimately, initially you didn't. No, initially I was like, I don't want to watch this show. Yeah. Who wants to watch a Batman but show I, that's like, not I kept, about Batman? I kept up with that first season. You came back around later on and watched. No. Watch, yeah. No. Yeah, I definitely beat you to the, the end. I had to hold off from telling you the reveals. Oh, maybe yeah, but it wasn't. But it's not like like weeks went by. It was probably just because I had kids or whatever and didn't watch it live. Oh, that's fair. <laughs> like I, I I didn't stop watching it. I I watched and I even watched it into season two. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean I'll, I'll give this a shot. I want like I I try to give everything a shot. Yeah. I mean obviously like we were just saying like we're at that wonderful period of time where we have to pick and choose what we give our attention to in nerd culture like seriously like i don't know should i watch the inhuman show or like <laughs> do i have time to fit that into my nerd schedule are you kidding me like <laughs> i feel bad for even having to choose it like right if 20 years ago i would like this would have been amazing this would have been an amazing opportunity well let's kind of continue with sort of like having to choose some of like which okay. shows we have to choose so new show coming out uh from fox we have The Gifted. Oh, yeah. So it's another X-Men show. It is from showrunner Matt Nix. The, at least the first couple episodes are directed by Brian Singer, but he is not the showrunner. So I'm, it's going to be just directing the first couple episodes. Yeah. So how much input has he had in this I think, show's I'm, universe? I'm pretty sure he has some input. Now there is one one thing that Matt Nix. So Matt Nix, I actually am already a fan. I liked one of his shows that got can't. Unfortunately, got canceled after one season, but it, it has the buddy cop vibe that I like. Like this is the guy. This is my dream pick to do a Heroes for Hire show that's a little bit more on a comedy slant. 
than than sort of the serious Marvel Netflix. He also was the showrunner for Bird Notice, which was also one. Oh, of my, that was like, a fun show. Yeah, it was like my guilty pleasure show. I really. It's loved a fun it. show. Yeah, I mean, and if they somehow found a way to bring Bruce Campbell in, I'd be even happier. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be that, that might save the gifted for me. Even like that might be that save little it. extra. Yeah, that's like that makes it puts it in elite status. <laughs> right, it's, it's it's must see TV. But I guess he's what uh, Ash vs. the Evil Dead right yeah, now. Yeah, he's got is, a little something going on right now. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I think he's, a little, he's he's got work. So, uh, but the gifted. Is so he's explained. So the gifted is a family drama. Uh-huh. Mutants, two mutant kids who've just like kind of discovered their powers, and they're on the on the run. Their dad is working for, I guess, uh, why can't I think of a name of an X Men organization? Sentinel. Yeah, let's just say he works for the FBI, Sentinel, or whatever, group, the yeah. anti mutant, you know, government task force. agency. Yeah, right. So, uh, so he's working he's for the HRG, right. But but he's and already he's going through that HRG arc of like now he's gonna try to help. Yeah, they're going for it right away. Right, because it's his family. It makes sense. It's a good. It's a good. Uh, you know, it's a compelling story. I, I just realized right they're just remaking Heroes. <laughs> a little bit, <laughs> but I mean, at least well, let's just hope it I mean, doesn't go. Through. They got a cute little blonde girl who's let, got mutant let, powers. Let's just let's just remember that how bad that like after the second season that show went off the rails i really wouldn't find badly. another i wouldn't like, find another, like a, swing, another at swing at it might be yeah. a good thing yeah but i just realized holy crap we're just getting heroes but there are actual x-men characters yes. also that are part of this major x-men characters major. polaris yep. thunder uh, bird blink blink eclipse eclipse is one i haven't heard of as much but i know he is a major x-men but we're getting these characters and they're on the run they even mentioned they don't know if the x-men or the brotherhood are even around Matt Nix at Comic Con confirmed that while, like, you could kind of say all these movies are in the same universe, they're not really. They're actually in different multiverses that were split from uh, the events of Days of Future Past. So Legion is in a different universe. The Gifted is, a, is in another universe. The, you know, Logan is in another universe. What happened in Apocalypse and the continuing movies with So that. every single one of those is a, is a separate yeah, reality. He, that's sort of his explanation. I don't think it's necessarily official. I'm actually okay with that. That, may, that helps with the whole continuity issues. Because there are lots of continuity issues with these X-Men movies, but... For for me, there's a little bit of a confirmation. Like I'm, I want Logan to stand on its own. Yeah. I don't want the kids from Logan to suddenly be like, "All right, guys, let's turn them into the new X Men." Right. Like, because I remember hearing some people say, "Oh, could they? Could that be the new X Men no, series they're continuing with?" And it's I like, I know that. that movie needs to stand on its own. You know, let it have its own power with that. You know, I still like love Days of Future Past. I like that role that it plays in those movies, but. I also choose to not enjoy the Apocalypse movies. <laughs> I choose not to enjoy. <laughs> that was not a decision for me. That was just sort of a gut reaction. Well, I choose to believe that that's a universe I'm just not as interested in. Yeah, that's, that's not what that. I'd like to not go back to. <laughs> if we have to choose between our universes. I don't, I don't need Sansa Jean Grey anymore. Uh, uh, <laughs> straight to Phoenix they go. Right. Awful. Um so so yes, yeah, so we have we we have the gifted with that. Well, what are your thoughts with this show? So I wasn't particularly excited about this show until I saw this new trailer that they dropped, and they really like and they like named out the uh, the X Men that that are, that are in it. Then I was like, oh oh oh, I know some of these people because kind of before then I was just like under the impression that it was like, and these are new mutants, and we're going to introduce some new mutants. Yeah. And I was like, okay, interesting. I'm glad they're creating some new characters for us to fall in love with. I hope they're good. But that's always kind of like a, a tricky thing to pull off. For like, any show. For any yeah. show to create a whole new character that you know we got to love. So to have some familiar names and some stories to go along with them. And they seem like like they're not, they're not the point of the show. They're like supporting characters in the show. But they're still going to be major supporting characters yeah. oh, in the show. I was, I was excited, especially with Blink. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that kind and the of. The effects look great. Yeah, the effects look really good. They're like, the good. Effects on par, TV. They're on par with uh, Legion. Yeah, absolutely. I Legion, Agents of Shield. Later I'd say that, seasons. Yeah, even better. I think yeah. outside, outside, like anytime you have, any, anytime you have yeah. anything flying in Agents of Shield, it's a problem. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but their Ghost Rider was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, it was really good. It, it was was really, never really flew. Good. It's it's when they fly <laughs> in that show that things get kind well, of. Well, let's just hope he, we never get a uh, Ghost Rider on a uh, on a glider at any point. <laughs> ghost glider. <laughs> <laughs> ghost Rider with a kite. <laughs> a squirrel uh, suit yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, so moving on 
on from the gifted. Uh, we'll come back to some of the other like comic and Star Wars stuff. Uh, but let's continue on with shows that we're not sure of our investment in right now. Yep. Uh, and I'm gonna go because you know, like I'm gonna beat you to the p- punch on this, but Ben will automatically say once I say the title of the show, "Fuck Scott Gimple." It's Walking Dead season eight. Fuck Scott Gimple. Uh, so, are you done with the show? No. Is it only because Jenny is still watching? Uh, it's the only reason that I'll watch it live. Okay. Is because Jenny insists on watching it live. Right. I would not watch it live. It's not must see TV for me anymore. Okay. That's right. Uh, I'm invested in the show enough to say, let's just see how this freaking thing ends. <laughs> okay. Like I'm ready for it to be over. To be perfectly honest yeah. with you, I don't think that the t- the t- I don't think the TV show has much left to say. Yeah, but it's clear that they're moving on from even. F- well, g- g- continue. So, like, we're in All Out War. I kind of want to see more of the tiger attacks. Yeah. Uh, other than that, I'm not really interested in any of the characters anymore. I, I don't it, – it's 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 become repetitive for me. Like, yeah. You know, whereas a couple seasons ago, people were complaining about how repetitive the show had become. And I was like, no, 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 no. Like, it's still really good character arcs and developments. Like, I feel now like – okay, n- I, I feel kind of like that where it's like, okay – they're not really going like nobody ever really grows in this show anymore. Yeah. It's just rinse and repeat of the same sort yeah. of, of, of situations. Is it just ring theory. No, no, it's not even as good as ring theory. It's, it's just like, well, it, it's just a, a repeat of, of what we've already done before. Just changing out the bad guy. Yeah. Yeah. There, there are definitely issues with the show. I, I usually have a problem with sort of the uneven pacing of the show. I'm fine with the character arcs. I don't mo- most fans of the comic and, and that's a that's not a good reason. I'm going to say right now that's not a good reason to have patience with a show is because I know the comic because you need to have the show be compelling enough for it has to stand on its own. Yeah, it has to stand who, on its own. Exactly. So if you haven't read the comic, you need to be able to still be willing to be invested in the show. So I I do recognize the non-comic, you know, viewers perspective on that and and I think it has absolute validity. I am such a fan of The Walking Dead. It's one of two comics that I actively subscribe to. Like the moment I get the comic, yeah, I read it. You know, it's it's. it's so you heard that Gimple said he's wrapping it up, right? The uh, comic book too. Yes. Yeah. Well, no, no, you're not not Gimple. I mean, uh, Robert uh, Kirkman. Kirkman, yeah. Yes, Kirkman, and he has like I heard about it two years ago when he said he has an endpoint. He just needs to figure out sort of the middle, but now he has a little bit more of a specific idea of like. He actually kind of know he doesn't know the exact number of issues, but he has a pretty good. But idea. it's coming up. Yeah, which I I'm I'm happy about. Like it needs that. Right. So here's my question. So here's here's kind of what I'm thinking. I'm thinking like his experience with writing the comic book and then his experience of seeing what's going on on the TV show. Yeah. Like I think he's gonna try and wrap them up together. I think so too. I think because I think and, it has like two case, seasons left. In yeah. It. If that's the case, then it should be this season and maybe one more season. Right. Maybe 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 one more after that. Maybe. But. That, that, that I think they wrap it up, and, 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 here's, and here's the uh, and here's my hint on the, like that. What do you make of that final shot of Old Man Rick? Yeah, so the final the, the final shot of Old Man Rick for me is there's no mystery to it. Like I know exactly what it is. Mm-hmm. Like it's um, it it feels beat for beat for what the book did. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm gonna just throw spoilers out here if you don't want to be spoiled for any Walking Dead spoilers. Like this is a legit one where usually since we're talking news, we wouldn't normally get into spoilers. Um, so I'm giving you a little bit of an opportunity here, uh, to, to, you know, to the way out, bail out. (laughs) Exactly. But there is a time jump. I'm going to phrase this as spoiler free as possible, but there is a time jump after the all out war arc. Right. And that is exactly it. Well, like it. It, it, I mean, the imagery, like the, the, the shots that they had even before they revealed With that the it was Rick. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All of that was just, yep, it's exactly. Beat for beat. Yeah, it's pretty, yeah. It's not shot for, it's not panel for panel. Uh, with the comics, but it's which the is same bit, thing. which is something that's happened a lot on this show. Yeah, they've done and a great I job of that. Like I like that too. They've done that. I like that too. Um, but uh, but yeah, it is definitely on those beats. My disappointment with that isn't that they aren't doing that. Well, my my original thought is I kind of wanted them to do all out war as a good natural ending point to this TV show. Mm-hmm. I can see why they would want to go on, especially as I've gotten a little bit more of the content. Like there's been some recent developments in the last two, three issues of the comic that have that have made me a little bit more invested in some of these more recent story arcs. Um, 
and it's very it it, it actually it, Again, I don't know if I can necessarily say this is a different direction for Rick, but it is very interesting. I still find Rick a fascinating character, even though his arc is very like it's it is repetitive. I I won't I won't disagree with that at all. Right. You know, but it is very interesting to see it with different circumstances in the world around him, not just um not just what his moral like what his his is ethical and moral lo- guideline is like it's not just the batman of like line of like should i kill or not type of stuff but there is there is more nuance to it and the characters that surround those decisions and whether or not you should trust those characters and to see how other characters react to his leadership i think the study of rick as a leader is a really fascinating thing to watch over the course of the entire series especially so it'll be interesting to see what happens there. My disappointment, though, with the impression I get from the trailer, because usually these trailers are just for the first half of the season, yeah. is that All Out War is going to be over in the first half of the season. Rather than, yes, they could. It, it, would, it would. In some ways, it'd be indulgent to have All Out War last a whole season. But I kind of would like that because that the other thing I really enjoyed about this trailer, it's totally different from the last several seasons we've gotten. Like, first off, like you had with, uh, what was it? Uh, <laughs> Terminus. Yeah, well, well, no, no, I was thinking the, I was I'm trying to think what the music was for this trailer. Like, we've had. It was like, way more upbeat and oh, kind yeah. of action pack film. Oh, yeah. Which it's a lot is, faster paced than I'm used to that. for. For yeah. The Walking Dead. And that was one thing Gimple said last year, that this season is going to be action-packed. And we were like, all right, well, all you've right, said that Gimple, before. Yeah, you've said that crap. <laughs> Fool me once. <laughs> right. And then this time, like, okay, even the music is different. The, yeah, I'll give you that. Like, I The did, one-liners. I did, yeah, I was just like, this feels like a different Walking Dead. This feels new and fresh yeah. which maybe might spark life into this show again for me and make yeah. me far more interested in it because it did <laughs> i did get a little more like I'm, I'm worn out on it like i'm bored right. by it and, and, fe- and it feels very much to me it feels very much like the path the characters have taken they've been so worn out like they are so worn out that even though they found this oasis in alexandria they still are dealing with the same issues they were in terminus so like to me that made sense but now like this this injection of fun to the story is just like it's really there's that nothing great. more fun than war. <laughs> right? <laughs> All right. But, like, I mean, straight, like, explosions left and yeah, right, you yeah. know. It was, like, I mean, uh, Daryl was doing his best Terminator impression, you know. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> um, Hopes are high. Right? So, yeah, we'll, we'll see. It, it'd be surprising. I'd be really surprised if the tone of that trailer is so different from the se- series. Because one thing is for sure, those last several trailers were definitely reflective of the tone of the show. Yeah. You know. Yeah, so if that's what we're getting this year, then, you know, hey, that's good news. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so that's what, where we are with Walking Dead. Uh, let's go to a show that we're very highly anticipating. We've got a little ways to wait. Jonathan Nolan's Westworld Season 2. <gasps> oh, man. So good. Oh, I don't I'm think so there's a whole excited. lot more than that we can say, so we should probably move on. Oh, <laughs> no, but, what, so excited for this show. My only disappointment with that trailer didn't see any samurai from samurai world i kind of wanted to see some samurai i was really kind of i think they're saving it. it for the show yeah i hope so i think they're actually saving that for the show i hope so and not giving it away too soon yeah i mean it, i guess and also the show is westworld so i won't be too disappointed i think yeah i think for the most part we'll stay in westworld but yeah. like having the tiger wash up the dead tiger on shore yes like made you think like oh we are going to get some spoil over from the different worlds right. interacting with each other i also thought it was i i was i was Excited to see uh, Teddy Newton's character. I don't know why I can't remember her character's name with the writer. Mm-hmm. I thought that was a really cool, like, okay, I'm interested to see what that story's got in store. Like, every arc, like, every story. Everybody, I like, yeah, I can't yeah. wait to see how this all plays like, out. Like, I totally forgot about Ed Harris for a moment, like, until I saw the, the Oh, the he's all, oh, <laughs> that final shot. Oh, yeah. it's so good, the little smirk on his face. Right. He's finally happy he can die. Yeah. And then, this is going to uh, be amazing. What was it? What's, uh, I forget her name. Ava, Ava, is it Evan Rachel Wood? Uh, yeah. yeah, Evan Rachel Wood, yeah. Yeah. The, uh, Riding on the horse. Yeah, shooting at people. And Looks amazing. I was, the, although, the storyline that I'm most fascinated by right now is Bernard's story. Mm-hmm. I was I found it like one to seeing him kind of like the way he was observing things, but seeing him riding with the soldiers mm-hmm. was very interesting. I'm I'm fascinated, and and it's something I think we already kind of anticipated and thought about. Like, how are these different? I guess and for lack of a better AIs. word, and, yeah, and they, yeah, the AIs, androids, whatever. How are they like as they get as they now have gotten sentience? 
what directions are they each going to go into at this point? Like, yeah. who's going to decide to side with humanity or decide with the cause of AI, you know, injustice against AI? Or is there a gray that's going to be there? I, and I get the feeling Bernard is, the gray. is that gray. He is the middle ground. <laughs> right? He's the middle way, which means that I'm going to love all about him. him. <laughs> I love him already. I mean, he was already so fascinating. Such, so fascinating fascinating so. character. Yeah, I can't wait to see the adventures that they have. And just like how, how this affects Westworld. Yeah. Like, do it, are is all this going to be happening? And still, there's going to be like AIs who are carrying out like the regular shows. Yeah, are they going to still be doing the quests on yeah, the side? Yeah. Yeah, and then like, and still going through the motions every day, resetting and going through it again. While there's other AI in the park that are completely sentient. Right. And, and, you know, creating havoc. I can't like I can't wait. This is going to be <laughs> amazing. I'm so excited for this ride. Oof. So. All right. So let's move on to. Uh, so we got our superhero stories. So OK. You know, what? let's start with Justice League. I like the trailer. It's I'm not going to lie. It's, it's a good trailer. And yeah. I, I was talking to a buddy of mine, John, earlier today, and it even felt like sure. Yeah. The color, the color scheme is still bad. But it does feel like Joss Whedon might have gone in. Just and, like, let's crank that and, up a little. Let's turn the lights on, guys. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's crank this up a little bit, guys. Yeah, I feel that way for two, too. I like the emphasis on fun. I I never, again, I'm still surprised that I say this, but I've never thought I'm exci- I would be excited to see Aquaman. But he's having a blast in this trailer. Yeah, so here I was talking to somebody about Aquaman today, and... Honestly, Aquaman feels not like Aquaman. He feels like he just walked off the set of Sons of Anarchy. <laughs> right? Right. And I'm like, hey, I'm okay with that's, that. That's an interesting interpretation of <laughs> Aquaman. Right. That we haven't really gotten before. Okay. I guess. I, you know. Well, so I also, I, so I also saw like there was footage of Jason Momoa at. Uh, at Comic-Con. Yeah, I mean, he's just playing himself. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's not even acting. The guy's having a, is just having a blast playing Aquaman. Hey, you know what? If like More power to him. Like, that's that, in a lot of ways, that's been the appeal of Robert Downey Jr. slash Tony Stark. Is that he is the character. <laughs> yes. And, he and really the excitement is. and yeah. the energy that he brings to it. So even if, if he can, if, if Aquaman could somehow be the bright light in this really dark Snyder verse, I'm okay then with so, that. So, so be it. So be it. I guess. You know, that's a good point. That is a good point. Cause I was kind of down on him today of like, dude, like it's, it's, it's a little much for Aquaman, but you're right. Cause like, you can't count on Batman to be that guy. And this Superman has already gone so far down the road of, of, like, of depression. Maybe death will bring him back happy. Yeah, and and He's Wonder come back full circle. And Wonder Woman brings a certain charm as well. And I like their Flash. Like I like the line that the Flash uh, had. Yeah. You didn't like it. I'm I just still, run away and push and push people over. Do you I'm just not, like Grant Gustin that much more. Uh, I do like Grant Gustin that much more, but yeah. I I don't know. I got to see more of this Flash before me to go. Yeah. I like this Flash. I'm not crazy about I his don't. costume. I've seen this actor before in some other series, and he I. I'm like, sure he's a fine actor. Yeah. So I, I just, I don't know. I'm fine with him as the flash. I wouldn't mind though. If and <laughs> it's funny, we were just talking about, we don't like, like we don't need continuity to happen between shows at all, but it would be nice though. If they did different flashes, you know, like Barry Allen was on the show and Wally West. Well, I guess Wally West is already is on, on the show. show. <laughs> yeah, but They're all on the show now. <laughs> that's Everybody, right. Every flash, every ever. flash ever is already there. I'm pretty there. sure they've created some new flashes on that just show. To, <laughs> just to give more flashes. Cause they can't think of any, other superpower somebody might have on that show <laughs> other than the speed force <laughs> right um yeah so uh yeah i mean i'm i'm but I'm, I'm not crazy about the suit for the flash i don't like an armored suit for the flash i know they we've seen it in different comics before but an armored suit for the flash doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me why because his only weakness is that he gets shot <laughs> <laughs> a sniper kills that guy every time. Like he's too fast for a sniper. Not even no, because the bullet's going faster than the speed of sound. He can't hear the bullet coming. That bullet goes through his skull before he knows it. I'm sorry. He's faster than the speed of light. It doesn't matter. How is he gonna know? He Once the bullet, hey, he doesn't have no, spider right. sense. <laughs> like by the time he realizes it's yeah. cut, like by the time he that's, realizes that's it's true. You've had this argument skull, before. You know what? We're moving on through his skull. We're moving on. <laughs> he's the worst hero ever. No, he's, he's the, the easiest one to kill. He's he's the the weakest and yet the most OP. Yes, all at the same time. I can't believe Deathstroke hasn't killed him yet. I don't understand. <laughs> or Deadshot. It. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, Will Smith. Uh, 
Anybody with a gun. Right. Uh, so, yeah, let's. So, yeah, I, but I still. I, I, I like this Justice League trailer. Uh, I, a couple things that I thought were interesting. So, you know, we're all still expecting Darkseid to show up in this movie, even though Steppenwolf is the. Uh, well, the I, I'll give him props for not showing it this time. Yeah, that's right. I'll give him props for that. Well, they may have shown something else, but we'll. Well, get they to did. They second. definitely did. Yeah. They definitely <laughs> spoiled Superman's comeback. Well, it could be Robin. He also has a red cape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It I mean, could Alfred be Robin. would be a little bit more surprised to see him back from the dead. Well, he said you were coming back. I could. I, yeah. I mean, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't see that coming. I, but actually, coming back to Steppenwolf, like, so I liked his voiceover in the trailer. Yeah. Where he talked about there's no lantern. So one, like, that was like, what? Mo- uh, oh, my God, lanterns exist in this <laughs> they, universe. They acknowledge them, at least. <laughs> that's the closest that's, we're getting to a movie, guys. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Other than Ryan Reynolds jokes, that's the closest <laughs> right? we'll ever see. Um, and then the no Kryptonian. So I thought that was cool. Um, we'll see how step what Steppenwolf is like as a villain. Maybe. So here's my concern about Steppenwolf. Yeah. Uh, who's the actor that's playing him? The the same guy who played Man's Raider from. Uh, yes. From, so yeah. he said that he had He's all CG, all CG, no interaction with any of the other people. He just did everything on a green steam. Yeah, I'm not a fan of that. This uh, feels very Attack of the Clonesy. Yeah, I have concerns about that. Yeah, I, I have that a is, lot of concerns. He didn't even have an outfit. Concern. Yep. He didn't have an outfit. That his outfit is complete CG. Yeah, which also feels very Wonder Womany to me, like uh, whatever the was it Ares Ares yeah. like yeah. Ares was super CG to me too. Where yeah. I was just like, okay, like it's clear this dude's just in CG. So here's here's the thing, it is kind of moving on from Justice League. So we also got the announcement that the Flash movie is going to be the Flashpoint storyline. So hashtag reboot. It kind of feels like it. Is that a bad idea to do it this soon into the picture? In some ways, we're going they're going all out and just doing big stories, which there is something to be admired about that. To say, I mean, yeah, I mean, Marvel's done Civil War. Marvel's right. done Ultron. In a, in a lot of ways, they they can't just sit back and like stay too small. I think the danger is doing so many big stories and then not coming small. For me, a lot of the again, I know Iron, a lot of people hate Iron Man three, but I, I love Iron Man 3 for a lot of reasons, not just for that story, but it was also a really pivotal moment in the universe from going from such a big moment as the Avengers, the Battle of New York, and then taking it down to a smaller personal story. Whatever your thoughts are about the Mandarin, it definitely brought the like the sc- it brought the, it the, scaled the it back scope down back down to, without to being disappointed in any way. Right. In, in, in terms of like scale and action. And, Same thing with Homecoming. Right. And and I think that that's a very important thing that Marvel has has learned and and knows that yeah still there's certain things that are yeah we got to blow up this big thing in the sky but they still have understood we need to bring it back and keep it personal that's i'm hoping that's something that happens with dc at some point or another flashpoint might be the the time to just kind of say all right and now we can kind of have a little bit more of a fresh white with the aesthetic because like we can, know, we can fire snyder yeah start over with a whole new brighter universe right reestablish new characters, recast some people if we need to. Exactly, because it sounds like Affleck might be on his way out. Yeah, despite his assurances to, to, well, the, to the other. There, it wasn't really an assurance if you read it. It, it just says, I it's like just, playing I really Batman. like being Batman. It's the role of a lifetime, and I'll yeah. do anything for this director. Please don't fire me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> to which I think their response was, stop drinking so much, you dumb shit. <laughs> right. <laughs> um. So I mean, we'll I'd be see. fine with him being Batman. Or I love him as someone Batman. else. As I Batman. love him as Batman. He's I think a really he's good fantastic Batman. Batman. But I can, I have no problem with recasting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, it, it's it's interesting. Like it from like from a time period. Like you don't want to reboot already. But then again, like you know, we had three. You know, traditionally, we do a trilogy reboot, trilogy reboot. Like right. so Spider Man, every three movies we get a new <laughs> Spider Man. Right. Um. So, what is the difference for DC doing this for their expanded universe? Well, because I'd rather changing up the continuity. I'd rather them break out from under the constraints of trying to maintain a consistent visual element. That's like. The consistent, vi- like... A vision. continuity. Yeah, exactly. The continuity of, like, all right, well, we have to make Man of Steel continue to work within this. We have to make Batman and Superman still work within this. 
if you take Flashpoint and wipe that out real quick, that that could help. You know, that could work. Like, I, I would prefer to see a Flashpoint story at some point, but down the road. You know, I'd want to see Blackest I Night, but I want to see well, it you down gotta, the road. Well, you got to have lanterns first. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that's pretty key to Blackest Night. <laughs> and we but same, barely have that. But in the same way that I wouldn't have minded if Civil War was a little further down the road with Marvel. Like, it worked. Don't get me wrong. I like Civil War a lot. Yeah. It's a very good movie. That's a great movie. But it it could have... Like, it could have worked a little bit further down. There's another yeah. story you could have put in there. To, yeah, I, I see what you're saying. I, you know, I, I think everybody has sort of like this. We know the bubble's going to burst on these movies eventually. Yeah. So you might as well throw your shit against the wall now <laughs> right. because you may not be able to tell those stories in 5, 10, 15 years. And like, that's true. Like you may want to. Yeah. So, you know, swing for the fences every single time. Because we, we are getting to a point where these movies are having to really reinvent themselves. Well, not as to reinvent themselves, but refresh themselves significantly. We've seen it from Deadpool and Logan with just the way, those, the way we're... Right. Like somebody got mad at me today because I said that about Wonder Woman. I said, it's a good movie. Yeah. Um, but I put it on par with like a Doctor Strange or an Ant Man. It's yeah. it's a good origin story movie, but it didn't really do anything new or exciting for me. Exactly. Other than the fact that it was Wonder Woman, who is a super popular character, and I really like Wonder Woman. And Gal Gadot was yeah amazing as Wonder Woman, yeah. but it was you know it, it wasn't anything special. Yeah, I think I think and you know obviously there's a lot of like the social justice aspect of it. For me, I think also what's special about that, and again, it's not necessarily because of that movie's quality is that this is a character that's been around for a long time. This is a character that has been a, that is part of the DC Trinity. This is a character that had its own TV show too. It's really a shame that it took this long to get for this sure. movie out. For sure. Absolutely. But that doesn't, that doesn't, that doesn't yeah. make it a better movie than it really yeah. is. That doesn't elevate the quality. And I'm totally with you where it's definitely gotten overhyped. Um, it's for gonna, yeah, for it's a gonna, lot of for a lot of the surrounding circumstances, yes, for those reasons that you just mentioned, yeah, largely, exactly. and and those are legit reasons, but that doesn't make it a better movie than it really is. Right, it's a good movie. Right, it's a good movie. It's not a great movie. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, and I totally enjoyed it. And they totally get the character. And so I I'm feel not, I'm like not and I, crappy on the movie. Bringing really it full like circle, it. I think Justice League is going to be a good movie. Yeah, I, I you know I don't I didn't leave that trailer going. Oh Lord, here we go again. Yeah, <laughs> not again, guys. I will, I will squeal with excitement if somehow they work Lantern into it. They, that would be so. Yeah. If you look, somebody did a picture, and I don't know if it's real or not. But when you zoom in on Alfred's eyes, it's green. <laughs> people, people make up stuff like that all the time. I'm not. I'm sorry. I'm not giving any credibility to it. I mean, it's a red. It's obviously a red cape. Well, it is <laughs> obviously a red cape. But you know what? Based on that color settings, it could be that could be, that that could may be, not be red. It, I mean, that could be atrocitous. <laughs> Honestly, right? <laughs> atrocitous showed up all of a sudden. No, this is coming. my world to destroy. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm pissed. <laughs> uh, that would be yeah. the best if they don't bring back Green Lantern. They bring back the Red Lanterns. That would be amazing. What a, that would be a twist. I would like. I would geek out over. That would completely. be really. Or the man. The the Manhunters were are also red. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, that could be cool too. Aforementioned Robin. Yeah, because uh, <laughs> shouldn't we be getting like Batman in a, or a Superman in a black suit after he's resurrected? And yeah, long that's hair? what I thought too. Like, why is he wearing a red cape? I thought like that was the whole thing was black suit Superman was. Yeah. 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 So yeah. So who knows who we're really getting? Yeah. It's Superman. It's Superman. <laughs> <laughs> it also feels weird that his first appearance is in the Bat Cave to Alfred. <laughs> like that. that he's look, like, maybe he's looking for Batman. <laughs> that, yeah. Was, oh yeah. I guess that makes sense. Hey, hey is Batman for, here? What the hell happened? You would think that there, this all this whole post apocalyptic war that's happening on no, Earth. He no, would have like. like uh, Let me go back cave. Uh, <laughs> let me see where Batman is. <laughs> he seemed like a swell guy to hang out with. Or, or maybe Batman somehow got his coffin and has it in the Bat Cave, so he just woke up. You know. Yeah, maybe that, that's also possible. Maybe, maybe the Bat Cave is underneath, uh, um, what Smallville. Yeah, right. <laughs> maybe he builds another sm- bat cave there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he did, it, it was it in Dark Knight. He had like a shipping container. Yeah, that, that was the high, the high, the entrance to his uh, his, his temporary base. compound. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows what's going on in this universe? I'm not sure they do. Right. <laughs> well, the good news is though that they did announce movies for this universe. Yeah. So we got Shazam announcement, Flash announcement, Green Lantern Corps. Corps. Yeah. So. 
Yeah, we got. Did some... they put dates on those? Yeah. No, they just no. said and we're in making no particular these. order. Yeah, the Batman was on there. No Man of Steel two was oh, on you. there. Um, Maybe there is a god. I think Wonder Woman two was on that list. Um, so so yeah, so there's there's definitely there's hope, and I think Birds of Prey was the other one because I believe David Ayers, who did Suicide Squad, is now working on. The Joss Whedon Birds of Prey, like Batgirl movie. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's what so, that is. Uh, and aren't we getting a Suicide Squad 2? I think. Oh, yes, the, there is also a Suicide Squad. And isn't Squad there. Two. There's the, uh, the the Harley Harley versus Joker movie. That's an animated movie. I oh, that is an animated yeah, I movie? That's an animated movie. Oh, that's too bad because I need more Jared Leto in my life. <laughs> so, Said nobody ever. <laughs> Let's move on from DC real quick <laughs> while, we, while we have that moment. Uh, so uh, Thor 3, or as I like to call it, Ragnarok and Roll. Uh, I'm sticking with it. Oh, my uh, goodness. Or as I like to call it, fuck you, DC. Because <laughs> that trailer was amazing. So good. Holy smokes. How fun was that trailer? Holy smokes. It looks so good. I... You know, there's so much this movie is looking to accomplish. That's what scares me. That's the one thing that scares me with this movie is there's – you have – so Hela destroys Asgard. You have Thor and uh, and um, Hulk on Warworld, and then he assembles his team with Valkyrie and Loki. Or as I like to call them, the Asgardians of the galaxy. <laughs> oh, I want – you want to love that. I do. I really do. <laughs> that, that, uh, I still like That's, Thor Ragnarok and Roll better. As but Thor, I think I kind of want to call this Thor Ragnarok and Roll the, as Guardians of the Galaxy. Is volume hard. 1. Volume 1. I think it's vo- final volume, if you <laughs> ask gonna me. It's going to be amazing. Because <laughs> I do uh, – so, That scene where they're walking up the – the, the Rainbow, Rainbow Bridge? Bridge? Yeah. I was like, oh, it's the Asgardians of the Galaxy. Full on electric Thor? Yes. It's like, it's amazing. Ugh. I've never been, like, I was I was hopeful for Thor 2. I never really had any expectations for the original Thor. But I felt disappointed by the last two. I am insanely excited about Thor 3. I never thought I, I would can't say that. You're saying, I can't believe I'm hyped for a Thor movie. I've never even liked the comic book. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to see this movie. Now, this is what I do want. So there are rumors of like there's Beta Ray Bill as a statue somewhere in there. Oh, really? Yeah. Now, I also saw there was also one of the big rock guys. I forget what they are. They're, they're, also, they're in um, Planet Hulk. As part of the, the the group, and in Planet Hulk, you also have a fight with the Silver Surfer. I'm uh-huh. not gonna have Surfer, obviously. No. My hope is that before the the big fa- uh, fight between Thor and uh, and Hulk, Hulk, is that there will be a fight in that arena, and Beta Ray Bill is in there. Not of <gasps> course with the Asgardian armor or Mjolnir, but please, please give please us Beta Ray. Beta Ray. Oh, <laughs> I want. I will geek out so hard. All right. <laughs> I will geek out so hard. Well, and so this is the other thing is Surtur is in this movie yes! too. Who's yes! very key to Beta Ray Bill. He is story. Really, yeah, he is the impetus to yeah. it. Yeah. So like I like that Surtur, was a huge surprise. Like I felt like like cause that was that was in a lot of ways. That was like I was I'm excited about Hella because of the potential connection to Thanos if she's truly a replacement death. for death. Yeah. Um, they certainly hint that in the trailer. Yeah, it, they it, certainly. It, it makes when she sense. says it, she's like, "I am death." Right. You know, so like, it, oh, it makes okay. a lot of sense. So, but I was always like, "Oh well, I guess we already got Dormammu in Doctor Strange, so we're not going to get Dormammu to be the one who brings her out Ragnarok right. in Thor three. We'll just have Hela, which is like that's cool, but I'm a little kind of a little just you know, yeah. it would be cool. And then Surtur pops up on that shot. <laughs> I was like, what "What just happened? (laughs) What am I seeing?" So here is so, uh, yeah. This so so like I just (laughs) criticized DC for giving away too much. Yeah, in Batman versus Superman, I kind of wish they held off on Surtur now, but I don't. Yeah, for what like for whatever reason, this feels so good. (laughs) Like to know (laughs) that he's he's involved. Like is is he pulling the strings? Right, or is he just unleashed by Hella? I'm thinking more unleashed. I think he's pulling the strings. He's pulling the strings. Okay. I think he's pulling the strings. I my thought is also like what's happening with Anthony Hopkins and you know where where's Owen? Who you know? Fenrir shows up, right? So, we, so there's a good so there's a there. good chance that that Odin's dead. Yeah, because Fenrir kills Odin. 
Okay. That's so, his deal. So, so my so, thought is Asgard is going to straight up get destroyed in this movie. Oh, for sure. Should, should we move on to the reason I think why the Infinity War footage? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, if you want to make that transition. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, that's so, a good transition. Uh, yeah, so so the opening, so, you know, Infinity War footage was shown at D23, at D23 and also at Comic-Con. Uh, and, you know, sort of unexpected. They were just kind of showing, like, hey, here's a retrospective of the Marvel Universe. You know, it's almost 10 years, or it is 10 years. Or it will be 10 years, I guess, in a little bit. Uh, and then all of a sudden, uh, there was new footage. <gasps> and there was, it was the Guardians of the Galaxy in space, like, right after, like, their, their ordeal with Ego. And then all of a sudden... They Thor's run. body just hits the windshield. <laughs> and Rocket's screaming, hit the wipers, get, wipers. Off. get it off, get it off. <laughs> <laughs> so perfect. I love it. It's so Rocket perfect. is my absolute favorite character in the MCU. He's the best. He is the best. <laughs> Him and Groot Him are and Groot just are the best duo. <laughs> fantastic. Although Hulk and Thor. Couldn't put, give, him, give him a good run. Now that Hulk, so, so the, the, what they said was Hulk has stayed the Hulk. For the past two years. Yes. Yeah, let's, which let's explain, come back to Thor. So which explains why all of a sudden he's able to, like, talk pretty well. Yeah. And, like, is really comfortable in his skin as being Hulk. He starts, like, getting clothing. Yeah. And, and dressing himself. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was also cool. Like, there was also, great, again, great moments in the Thor trailer. Coming back to Thor for a moment. You know, like, the interaction between Mark Ruffalo in, as, as Banner along with Thor was great. Was like, fantastic. With the jacket and everything. <laughs> like the 1980s Duran Duran t-shirt and that really weird, yeah. like sparkly black jacket. I, I'm assuming it's for Hungry Like the Wolf at some point. It's at gonna, some yeah. point, yeah. That, yeah, the soundtrack on that movie is going to be pretty bitchy. Yeah. I have a feeling. It, re like, it really feels, again, as Guardians of the Galaxy, they're really going to go for that Guardians of the Galaxy vibe. I... Taika Waititi, the director, I love what he he did with Flight of the Conquerors. I watched Hunt for the Wilder People. I still need to watch What We Do in the Shadows, the the vampire mockumentary that he made. Um, so so there's still that, but Hunt for the Wilder People definitely worth a watch. Indie comedy, you know, so it's it's not necessarily like laugh out loud all the time, but it's a really really good story. Good, Smart, funny, yeah, well written story. Exactly. Uh, his, 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 the scene with his, where he plays a pastor, I think I shared that with you, yes. is absolutely yes, hilarious. It looks fantastic. <laughs> so, I have a feeling that a lot of diehard Thor fans aren't going to like this movie. I think so too. I think this is going to end up being a very Iron Man 3 type of situation. Right. Where comic fans are going to be very pissed with this movie. Yeah. I think the only redemption, because my thought is Asgard will get destroyed at the end of this movie, and that's why Most we see definitely. Thor's body just floating in space and hitting, like, so that it even has a chance to hit a Guardian spaceship. Right. Because otherwise, like, that's sort of a random place to, to kind of be, you know? Right. So, yeah, and something bad has to happen at the end of this movie for Thor to just be, like, floating in space unconscious. <laughs> right, right. So, it, yeah, it's it, not going to end on a happy note. Well, the other thing is, so the other element we also got to wonder is, again, that this movie may have to accomplish or maybe accomplishes off screen or in another movie, but Doctor Strange has also been hired to help find Odin, as right. we saw in that post credit scene for Doctor Strange. Yep. So we also have, like, there's so many things. There's so many moving parts that are going on in this movie. Yeah. That we I'll, don't know much about. And there was also an announcement that Black Panther is going to have some, some sort of, some of the final moves setting up for Thanos' entrance. So that's going to be also how interesting how that plays into it. Yeah, Does that knows? mean there's another Infinity Stone that, that they that's have? That's in Wakanda? Yeah, I mean. Or ends up in could Wakanda? It, could it be the Soul Gem there? <laughs> Right, uh, that would be. <laughs> that, that, it's more like racist, right? I mean, if the black country has, I don't has soul. Uh, like I, mean, I, I made the joke before that I just want the soul gem to be in James Brown's coffin, <laughs> that Thanos just comes to Earth, like Thanos just like drops like hero pose to like to like lands on Earth, like opens up like br James Brown's coffin and pulls the the soul gem grabs out, the so grabs the gem, says out of his skull, and says I feel good. Feel good. Yes. <laughs> Uh, I hope so. <laughs> right? <laughs> ah, he's the best. <sighs> it's in Detroit, like somehow. <laughs> like where Motown lived and died. <laughs> uh, 
Well, the great thing is, is that you can like just film Detroit and everybody be like, oh yeah, they, oh, yeah. Just, they no, destroyed, that they destroyed that place. That makes sense. <laughs> uh, then the soul gem is hidden out in Flint, Michigan. They thought it'd be safe there because nobody would ever go there. Because <laughs> who can drink the water? <laughs> uh, yeah. I, who knows? I, I don't know how, what Wakanda will have to do with, with. Yeah, I, I that one feeling, doesn't make much sense to me, but what, we'll see. What, where I think it might make sense is so if you remember at the end of the first Avengers movie, the whole thing was like, you know, Earth is sort of emerging as a power for them to contend with. And so that's why Thanos is kind of on his way to Earth is sort of like he is a power he can he can contend with. He's got people he can really like duke it out with yeah, a punch back. Exactly. So maybe Wakanda like it seems like there's a lot of like is Wakanda gonna open itself up to the to the world at large? It seems to be something that might be a part of this this next the the Black Panther right. movie. So if they do open up and with the technology that they have available, like maybe mm, that that yeah. maybe that has if something to do with the rest of the world the, can then help fight against right. Thanos's invasion. The, there might be something. I there. guess that's I mean the, that doesn't seem the, like a major point plot point. To that, me. That's the only thing I can think of. I have no idea how else it would factor in, but we'll we'll see. So that's Black Panther. Let's come back to like we're we're jumping all over the place with this one. Uh, Infinity War footage. So, so oh, we, yeah. So we had so we had the Thor moment. You, we had was it? he was woken up by Mantis. He's he's freaked out by seeing the, the guardians. Who the hell are you guys? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, we also saw a. There's a moment with Spider-Man showing up. There's. there's the, can, can we talk? We finally like the one criticism that I have for Spider-Man: Homecoming is it doesn't really seem like he has spider sense. Right. Like not even like he relies completely on the technology and like he's getting hit left and right. He's like not knowing when people are about to attack him or anything. Right. Well, Shocker. Shocker just it. like completely sucker punches him. Like yeah. so like we have a shot in the in the new trailer where like the hair on his arm like stands up and he looks out a bus window or whatever. Like to me, like he's indicating like, oh, he, ha he actually does have spider sense. Yeah. I'm like, where the hell did that come from? Right. <laughs> where was that the last movie? Like, right. And I mean, I guess it's debatable if he had it in uh, Civil War, like because yeah. you see his eyes kind of open and close at certain points, kind of hinting that maybe there's some spider sense going on right. there. Without doing the whole slow-mo thing. Cause Which is totally hurt, okay. Yeah. I don't need that. Yeah. But it, it is interesting that like we went from ha maybe having it to definitely not having it <laughs> to having it again. Right. Like th that's a weird, weird Yeah, choice. it's it's yeah, it's a weird way to treat the spider set. So we'll see, you know. Uh I mean obviously Homecoming was great, so I don't I, I mean that's such that. a minor complaint. Yeah. Like but it, I did it think thing, about yeah. it. Like I did think it was, it's it's, it's, yeah, it was like people were like, All right, let's nitpick this movie apart. I was like, Well what about the spider sense? Where the hell was that? Right. Like <laughs> Yeah, that's more important than, like, Uncle Ben not being in the movie. <laughs> He's not Batman. Let it go, people. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, so we had that. We also had, like, shots of, like, some of the Avengers along with the Guardians of the Galaxy looking in horror. And we had some VO from uh, from Thanos. And he emerges uh, teleporting to – it looks like it's some other planet. And I guess. It doesn't look I don't like know a, where it is, yeah. Yeah. Um, it was hard to tell because the footage was handheld. That's true. We're not but, getting real footage yet. Yeah, and but even the descriptions that were written down didn't really make it sound like it was because like he pulls a moon apart and throws it at somebody. Right. Yeah. Which, which is like the final moment of the trailer, which is it was pretty, pretty epic. bitching. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so you know you had stuff like that. You had like Doctor Strange creating platforms for Star Lord to jump and shoot from. You had uh, Thanos like crushing uh, Thor's head. Uh, you had uh, Spider-Man apologizing for letting Stark down while he's like cradling him yeah. in his arms. You also had you also had Spidey in the the new uh, suit that's that the Stark made for him. Suit, yeah. So like there's I mean there's all sorts of oh uh, we also had uh, Bucky uh, with a new arm bleeding mm -hmm. some soldiers. There are a bunch of Wakandans uh -oh. preparing for battle. You had Cap looking in a new brand new costume rumored to be the Nomad costume. With the beard, beard, widow with blonde hair. Right, that's right. Widow with blonde hair. Uh, am I am I missing something? I think mm, I, I think we covered. Just that's about, a lot. It's pretty much oh, all the shots uh, we got. Vision and Scarlet, oh, Scarlet Witch, Witch looking, Witch, at each looking other. very sadly. Yeah, because it looked like Vision was in maybe in something of a prison. So yeah. it's gonna be interesting to see if. I don't. I couldn't tell whether or not he they still had, had they the conveniently gem. have this forehead hidden yeah. in the shot. So it's, if somehow maybe there's some way he can live on without the soul gem powering him is going to be an interesting thing to see if if that is like if if, if that's the where they take it. Yeah, if the moment they pull out the gem is like a battery and he just you know. <laughs> uh, 
Which, I, like, I mean, I don't have a problem with. Especially if he does the boom. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather have, like, the Windows log off sound. <laughs> do, do, do. <laughs> Shutting down. Right. <laughs> that would be pretty awesome. Um, but, yeah, so, I mean, there's some, like, a lot of, like, just absolute huge action moments, big spectacle. It looks amazing. So, Thanos looks amazing. Thanos looks great. <laughs> Thanos looks pretty and cool. And we didn't even see the Black Order, his, the children of Thanos. Yep. But they are they're the they're toys in the are poster. Yeah, in the they're in the toys are there, and they're, yep. in, they're in the poster as it's well. It's going to be so. fun. It's going to be a fun movie. It's Yeah, I'm excited. I'm yep. really, really excited. Fortunately, Fuck we got through you, with Thor Justice 3 <laughs> to hold us over. Um, so uh, before we move on from Marvel, though, I do want to throw in one little bit more of uh, one more piece of Marvel news. We got Captain Marvel. Oh, yeah. I know, right? This is huge news. So, Captain Marvel, we did find out that Nick Fury is going to be in this movie. Woohoo! And it's going to take place in the 90s. What? Right? So, but this is another interesting piece. We found out that the secret deal that, that Disney worked out with Fox let them bring the Skrulls in. And they will be the villain for Captain Marvel. Wow. Wow. Okay, so I have a lot of thoughts about this. Yep. Number one, brilliant move. Yeah. Going backwards in time and having Captain Marvel fight the scrolls with Nick Fury with both of his eyes. <laughs> right. They've also confirmed it'll be pre uh pre eye patch Nick Fury. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. So I'm assuming that means we'll find out how he got the eye patch. Right. So scrolls, great idea. You know, can imitate other life forms and look just like them. So you begged the question on the car ride home today. Yep. Who has been replaced? Who yeah. have we been watching that's already been replaced by a scroll? So let us know also if you have any ideas or theories. I think J. Mike has been replaced and we should kill him. J. Mike was always a scroll in my heart. <laughs> no, I. Uh, Widow. Oh. Interesting choice. Widow also seems like one of the candidates who will be in future movies too. Uh, out of that original crew, like I don't expect, you know. You think we, they'll continue to pay ScarJo? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Okay. Uh, I but I I, I expect um, Robert Downey Jr., Chris Hemsworth, and Chris Evans to will not out. be. Yeah, will not be. Or in just make phase cameos four. here and there. Right. So because this is one of the first Phase Four movies, you know, obviously Spider-Man: Homecoming is a big deal in Phase Four, and it, it seems. It, it, all indications seem to be that he's sort of the the way Stark has been sort of the his the story has block. driven yeah. a, a, the major universe forward. Um, Spidey's is going to be that. Right, which I think is a good way to pass the torch. In a lot of ways, I think Captain Marvel will do a little bit of what Guardians has done in terms of building out some of that cosmic lore to make the way for Thanos, which is why I think the Skrulls might be the villain for her movie, but I think they will also end up being the big Phase 4, Phase 5, or Phase 6, like Thanos-type threat that we end up having to face for another big Avengers movie down the road. Yeah, I, I can see that for the next phase is that, is that it, you know, they, they are the big bad or, or a pawn of a big bad. Right. Uh, I also think what it's going to do is it's going to tie back into Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Yes, we all, I also mentioned that. Who we're not, we're absent. We didn't. Yeah, see we didn't all... get any Agents of Shield news this yeah. year. Last year we knew it was going to be Ghost Rider, and we got the cool Ghost Rider bus right. ads. All and we stuff know like that. is that uh, that uh, Coulson is in space, and our immediate thought was in humans. But it kind of makes more sense to do some world building for the Skrulls. See, my thought is, and again, I mentioned it in the car ride over here was that maybe he's in space and maybe mid-season reveal, we find out that he's, like, we find out he has a connection to the Skrulls and the whole, you know, we maybe we even see Nick Fury out there with him in space. Like, maybe Nick Fury is off building S.W.O.R.D. to prepare for the I, Skrull yeah. invasion. That's what I, I think we're going to get Agents of S.W.O.R.D. Yeah. I think, I think we're going to go off If the show transitions into Agents, Agents of, of S.W.O.R.D., Sword. I will be so excited. It also could make sense for those are the agents that captured them at the end of that last right. season. Yeah, totally. You know? Yeah. And, and yeah. And they're just, you know, they're in their bunks or whatever, and they're just going to work to, to establish this new order. Right. Like sh they're going to, you know, shield is going to be taken over by somebody else and run on earth, but I, they, yeah. fury needs them to create sword. I will be so excited if it is agents of sword. I think it is. I think it is. I think that's why it's been real quiet about what's happening next yeah. season. Cause they've, yeah, they've been, 
mysteriously quiet. quiet. Like yeah. no, nobody's shown up to any cons. Yep. Nobody has made any announcements. There's been no pictures, no trailers, nothing. Right. Which means that they're holding on to something tight, which would spoil whatever's coming. Right. I.e. Captain Marvel, like being involved with sword, like she is integral to sword. So like, the question that the, the question that Captain Marvel being in the '90s leaves for me is, is what she was doing, what all she's this been time. doing all this time. Like, where was she for the Battle of New York? If she, because she is like a big part of Sword. Yeah. So and do, she, did, she what has a power set that that should, would fit yeah. for that invasion. So my I, thought curious. is she was off. Like Nick Fury had already sent her off on some mission in deep space. That she was either maybe, maybe she's undercover or trying maybe, to find out what the scroll are up to. Or so maybe she, she's uh, in stasis or something like that. Right, right. There could be, yeah, any number of, of, of reasons. Of excuses why she's not. Why the, she's not. Yeah. But I, I don't think Sword exists until now, this coming season right. with Agents of Shield. Yeah. I think that's when we'll see the establishment of Sword. All we know is Nick Fury has been roaming the earth. Like Jules. <laughs> like Jules. <laughs> Should be doing something. Yeah, so I, I assume he's been sort of putting the pieces, pulling the pieces together for and preparing for the scrolls. That maybe he's caught on that something is someone is a scroll. Like, well, could, I mean, could you've you... already had the battle for New York. You already know that there's entities out there in space that can and will attack the Earth. Yeah. You better create something to help defend that. I mean, they've already retconned that shield was controlled by Hydra at this point. Right. So you can't necessarily make any of those Winter Soldier villains scrolls necessarily. I guess you could. You could, but it wouldn't make much sense to. Yeah, at this point especially since most of them are gone and Hydra is pretty much gone at this point in the Marvel universe. So it'd be, it'll be interesting to see who we find out are scrolls and who aren't, you know, if anybody Ant man could be, you know, you could, you could make Hank Pym. A you scroll could, somehow. you could. Yeah. I mean, there's a couple people you could, I don't know how, I mean, unless you're really going to be building with those characters in the second phase well we're getting an ant-man and the wasp movie yeah so Ant -Man, and there's a big announcement there michelle pfeiffer michelle pfeiffer as janet van oh, as the wasp such the or good original casting. wasp oh such good casting yeah it's really gonna be, I, i'm excited to see her yeah and excited to see also that we got casting for black goliath yes that's right uh Lawrence fishburne yep as great casting so Great it's casting. cool seeing that we're getting into some of these like fringe, like a little bit more on like the, the tertiary characters. Yeah, like yeah, we're getting out there now. Yeah, we're it, out it, there. we're not too far away from potentially getting Simon Williams. Uh, well, if, uh, why why if, not ter Mr. Terrific? I forget. Uh, Case is gonna we'll, kill we'll, you for this. Yeah, he will I know. destroy you. He will. We're getting Squirrel Girl, Wonder Man, Wonder Man. That's who it was. Yeah, yes. we're getting Squirrel Girl on a TV show. Mm -hmm. uh, played by Milana Vintrub. If you, everyone will know her as the, the, the girl from yeah the AT and T commercials, uh, who is she is legitimately funny too on her own uh, YouTube channel and has been on a couple other like web series. She is so so she's a she's definitely good. It's not Anna Kendrick, but it's yeah. it's a good I'll runner up. I'll take it's a good runner up. Instead. I mean, I re I really had my heart set on an Anna Kendrick Squirrel Girl I've musical. I've always had my heart set on Anna Kendrick. Period. Anything. Yeah. <laughs> no, I really wanted a Squirrel Girl mu musical. I always thought that would be amazing. That would be amazing. One shot. They could still do it as a one shot, guys. You should do it as a, a Broadway show. <laughs> right? You should do it as a Broadway show. I'd go. We had Spider-Man the Broadway show. That's true. You two did the music. Why not? <laughs> oh, man. All right. So let's let's move on from Marvel to what this, <laughs> this podcast is truly at its heart about, and it's Star Wars. So... Last Jedi behind the scenes trailer. It's been a, it's not been a couple weeks since that came out, but I've watched funny. it almost faithfully every day. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because I loved it and then I never went back to it. Really? I haven't watched oh, it it's, again. It, I I switched it out of rotation with the other Last Jedi teaser, so it's like right now I'm watching that and the Rebels trailer constantly. Hmm. That Rebels trailer is it's what I'm amazing. most excited about. But that Last Jedi trailer has a lot. Like, so yeah, it's interesting. They've gone for the behind the scenes teaser for the last for the for each of these movies. They've done a teaser behind the scenes, and then there's another big trailer that'll be on its way at some point uh, in the near future. So, um, you know, definitely trying to cater to the fan base as much as possible to kind of show a little bit of thought process. 
Every time Carrie Fisher shows up, though, it just kind of like I feel a little broken down when I see her. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because she looks so broken down, yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's horrible. She's dead, Addy. Shouldn't make jokes about her. Oh come on! <laughs> Stop masquerading. Your joke is one of mine. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I, I did. I I got the feels yeah. when I see her, and you know, the, I think they have a shot of her and, and Mark Hamill. Hugging, they did. Yeah, that was the one like, that. Oh, <laughs> right there. In the Damn feels. you for played on my emotions yeah, that like was just really, like so blatant like you know what you're doing guys yeah they're really milking that and I, it's okay it's fine it's her it's her last movie so yeah 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 I, there, there could potentially be a shot or two for her in in the next one but yeah but not, probably yeah. not a ton like they had originally yeah. planned they so could just get stevie nicks to do the rest <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah, it looks it looks really it doesn't look interesting. It looks fantastic. There's so much like the, the you know there, there was the same sort of excitement when we saw the practical effects for Force Awakens and seeing them on screen with the practical effects. Again, though, I can't get over how cool that looks. Like the creature design. Yeah, you know the what I can't get over? Wolf looking creature. Yeah, it's like really cool. The pores. Look pretty awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I know you're on like. Oh, I'm already geez. skeptical. It's, your Ew- it's our Ewoks now. <laughs> yeah, I think this is our generation. This is generation's Ewoks. Looked up into its eyes. Its eyes blink, man. Its <laughs> eyes blink. <laughs> well, it's already a step up above. I'll probably like it better than Ewoks. You know what I can't get past yeah. is how much Ray looks like Qui Gon. <laughs> so, so Qui Gon is Ray's father. Like she has her hair. Like when she has her hair up and like the samurai. Oh yeah, and, and you're like, right. And the tan like Jedi robes. She <laughs> looks like Liam. Ne- she looks That's like a so young weird, yeah. female Liam Neeson. Well, it's funny because people have talked a lot about her fighting style being very like young Obi Wan like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> which is like, I, I I know there's a contingent of Ray Kenobi fans, which I'm like. That's cool. I'm all for more Kenobi. But it, it's pretty antithetical. We could be getting our Kenobi new movies and not even know, <laughs> not it. Even know it. <laughs> I do have a problem with that, though, because that takes away from, like, Kenobi being the traditionalist. It makes him a complete hypocrite. With From a certain point of from view. From a certain point of view. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for doing that. I was hoping you would. <laughs> and see. <laughs> Last episode, guys. Thank you. Good night, Good night. everybody. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I. it is so antithetical to who Obi-Wan who, yeah. has to be in sort of the overall lore as far as who Anakin is. It really, it really does compromise that if somehow Man, you're out on that desert planet alone for a couple of years, like <laughs> like he just maybe like, maybe like you know what he wasn't maybe he's not really a Jedi anymore. Maybe I don't know. Uh, yeah, I eh. I don't think I I don't th- I think it doesn't I, seem I likely. So. No, it it seems it seems m- unlikely. It yeah. seems very unlikely. It seems most likely she's a Skywalker. a Skywalker, but if she's not, I would actually like it a little bit more. Yeah, no. My my ideal, I, the ideal is that she's a brand new character. It doesn't actually matter who her parents are at yeah, the end of the day, other than they abandon her, right? And that she is a new hero that is just that. In, in a lot of ways, what I want from that, and it's funny that like you get into a Star Wars discussion, you always get into like who's Rey or who's Snoke now. That's just sort of the the, the expected conversation. But with Rey, I think what's important with having her not have any connection to any sort of heritage is sort of what the opportunity was with Luke originally. What made Luke special in that for in in, in a new hope. Was that he was nobody. Right, is that he's a nobody. But then, and of course it works out because Empire is so good and and I love what Return of the Jedi, how it it ultimately ends that arc. But he ends up being someone who's connected to a bigger destiny. It's not everything is necessarily, uh, there's a lot that's about the saga of the universe and the will of the overall cosmic force around him. Whereas I'd rather... Ray be again you can still have the will of the cosmic force but she doesn't need to be related to anybody right for that, that to she has like it's in her birth to be destined to yes. be great yeah but that instead she chooses and because she way, answers the call right because i think there there still needs to be enough of that sort of the in terms of mythology the the vagueness of interpretation of is it about Destiny, destiny guiding your path, or is it about your own choices guiding your path, or is it both, or is it neither? Is you know, is there no purpose at all? Like, obviously, Star Wars is not going to go down any sort of nihilistic <laughs> ways any anytime soon. We have enough Rick and Morty to, to <laughs> do that for us, which I that, I'm so thankful for. That that ep- the first episode of season three is amazing. Yeah. Uh, 
<laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I really do hope that she doesn't have any ties. To I think it would be smart to. for them to avoid that. Yeah. But I don't know that they're going to be able to, re- to resist, to resist that. that. Yeah. It's so tempting to make her a Skywalker. Yeah. But it would be the best if she's not. Yeah. And she's actually a Chewbacca. Yeah. <laughs> she was. <laughs> <laughs> and we she just, just keeps getting, the, she just keeps getting hairier and hairier. We just see her with a razor in the back of the Falcon. <laughs> and suddenly, see like Lumpy show up <laughs> as this, like, Kylo Ren is Lumpy. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be the best. <laughs> 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 That'd be very, like we see like Chewie and Lumpy somewhere having a Vader and Luke moment on Bespin. <laughs> <laughs> he just falls backwards. As long as he doesn't yell while he's doing it. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Oh, well, I think on that note, we should probably wrap up this episode. And if you're not watching this on video, you're just listening to it, do yourself a favor and go watch the last 10 minutes of this <laughs> podcast on YouTube or you're, Facebook. Because it's fantastic. That, 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 like, that should have been the motion capture for Lumpy's fall <laughs> down the reactor shaft. Uh, Call me, Lucasfilm. Call me. <laughs> I'm available. Uh, I work cheap. <laughs> I will say before we go that the casino scenes look Incredible. Really cool. Really cool. Yeah. I want to go gambling. <laughs> right? Well, that's not any different than usual. But I want to go gambling there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so on that note, let us know what you think. Do you have any predictions for who's a scroll? You know, who do you think Ray is related to? Does it matter? Is she going to be related to anybody? What are what shows are you excited for? Are you excited for Gotham? Are you excited for any shows that we didn't mention? We didn't even talk about the DC C- or CW shows. No, not really. No, there's no, no reason to. <laughs> I'm still going to watch them. Like, yeah, I don't know. Yes. <laughs> anyway, let us know what you think. You can go to our website, certainpov.com. Again, certainpov.com. And until next week, stay scruffy, my nerf herders. Thanks for listening to Certain Point of View. Don't miss an episode. Just subscribe, rate, and review the podcast on iTunes. Head over to certainpov.com.